Volume? Good. Go on. Recording. Welcome to the Nation Podcast for Knife Man Nation, where fans come, AFL fans come together. I'm your host, Eric Thoreau. Tom Jones! Yeah, and he's my partner for the show. Um, basically, this is a new show. We're introducing it. You've probably heard in the past um, of my wanting to do a podcast for Knife Man Nation to get it started. Well, we are finally doing it, and I brought along with a longtime AFL vet fan, um, Tom, here. Yep, yep. So we're going to be basically just briefly discussing um, what we're about. Uh, we're, we are from San Jose, so of course, you know, we were longtime diehard fans of San Jose Sabercats and proud members of the San Jose's Ninth Man Fan Club they had here. Uh, we went on road trips uh, basically almost every year and um, rooted for the team, our team here in San Jose while they were on the road. But more importantly, we are big fans of the Arena Football League and what it, what it stands for and, and, and basically the overall product on the field. Yes, uh, should we do introductions? I feel like it's quite late or something. You can do introductions. Okay. Introduce yourself, Tom. All right. Uh, once again, I'm Tom Jones. I've had season tickets uh, since 95, since the inception, the beginning of the uh, Sabercats organization. And uh, I was actually, back in the 90s, I was uh, season tickets for the uh, Niners. And, uh, you know, went to all the big games, the uh, big Dallas rivals, the Green Bay rivals, you know, all that good stuff. And uh, my son was uh, born at that time, around 95, and... I didn't think it was a good environment to have them go to, like, NFL games. So this arena football sport came along, and when I saw it, uh, I started getting into it. And uh, it wasn't in San Jose yet, but I kind of just prayed and hoped that it would come to San Jose. And lo and behold, boom, Sabercats uh, were announced. And, uh, you know, they brought in the dignitaries from around the league to kind of show off the – logos and the colors and everything and uh i picked my seats and uh from from that point on every year uh just becoming a bigger and bigger fan uh the game up until today uh so that's kind of where i started uh passionate about football passionate about the league and uh i think you know for the money uh for the value that you get for the personalization that you get where you feel you really closer, a lot closer in the NFL uh, to the games. Uh, I just think there's no other uh, football sport available around and uh, I actually think it's better than the NFL because of the fact that you have the ability to interact with these players and the players maybe they're not, you know, the big uh, money-making uh, players that you might find in the NFL you know, the millionaires that are making all this money and stuff and all this commercialization and everything, but you actually get to meet players that are passionate for the game that you know that still want the potential opportunity to kind of hit the big leagues but at the same time you know they're best in the world of what they do uh is in arena football and often you might find that nfl players they may have a difficult transition going to the arena game because of the fact that everything is kind of like half the uh half the size the fields half the size and you know just the whole makeup of it quarterbacks that have been playing out the outdoor game all their lives on a hundred uh, field you know uh, area coming down to 50 uh, feet or 50 yards they might find that uh, the you know the, the game is just too fast so it does take often a couple years for the quarterbacks to slow themselves down or slow the game down because it's such a high pat high fast high impact, you know, in your face, hit the wall, out of bounds type of uh, experience. So uh, there's nothing like it. And uh, that's why I'm so passionate about it. And a lot of people, uh, you know, the regulars and even like the newcomers to the league, the new fans, uh, that's why they like it. They, it's just a different sport. It's football, but it's just a completely different experience. And you really feel like you're part of the game where, you know, players are falling into your lap and, Footballs are falling into your lap. So that's what brings me uh, year after year, year after year, game after game. And I, I think it's pretty similar uh, to uh, what Eric, what brings him. But uh, how about you, Eric? Uh, you know, what, what brought you uh, 
to the sport. I'm sure you grew up with regular American football. Yeah. And uh, like you, I was um, I was a diehard follower of the um, the 49ers in the NFL, and um, basically. I didn't hear too much about the arena football when it first started here in San Jose in 95 with the Sabercats. But, um, oh, sorry, I'm, just I'm, I'm changing over here, and we're now um, broadcasting on Ninth Man Nation at Meerkat. We're broadcasting live, so if you want us, we are here doing our podcast. But anyways, yeah, um, I basically got my first whiff of um, arena football when I saw a game on their national television on TNN. Um, the the, Nas- the national network, which is now called Spike TV, and I thought it was pretty interesting. I saw a couple games locally on Channel 11 for the SaberCats, and also I thought it was interesting. And I was glad that San Jose had uh, its own team. <coughs> um, excuse me. Um, so basically, I ent- found out more information on it. Saw that it was Channel 11, and we basically um, went to. Um, go to their website and I noticed that they were having a contest on winning free tickets so I went and dialed up and submitted my information below I got some free tickets to a couple of the Sabercat games and then once I went to the game and saw the game in person I was just hooked so this was back in uh, I believe in 99 when this all happened and then in 2000 I bought my first um, season tickets and I was lazily um, row eight eight rows from the field and love it. And then the second year, 2001, I was offered to move up to front row, and which I've is actually there. row five or row four. It was row four at the time because of the way they configured the arena, from um, the hockey configuration to the arena football configuration, it takes a little more room. And uh, basically, I've been there ever since. And then, but we moved. We recently moved back to row five because um, the management of the arena went to change how they do the configuration of the seats. It's going from a manual configuration to an automated configuration and therefore had to take one of the rows back. So, but we're still we're still front row and we still sit there and we still have like the best seats in the house at the SAP Center or we did until recently, you know, of, of things that have transpired and we'll get we'll get into that further uh, later on. And so 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 also I want to mention uh, kind of how I met uh, Eric um, I actually started up, I was able to, that first uh, session that they had where you can actually go and pick your tickets out, um, I had the opportunity to kind of walk around the uh, stadium, the arena, and kind of see what the best, uh, you know, the best seats are. So I wanted to get, like, front row, but at this time, because the arena, the way it's set up, you can have front row in the in the upper reserves, and you can get literally on the 25-yard line, which is the center of the field. So that's kind of where I picked so I start off with a couple tickets, and, you know, this was all fine and dandy, but during the playoffs, I wanted to kind of get a better uh, uh, perspective. So during the playoffs, I would always upgrade my tickets and kind of go downstairs. So <laughs> one year I was in one area, uh, the first arena bowl uh, arena, uh, that the Sabercats uh, were in, that they won uh, against the Rattlers, which was uh, 2002. Yeah. Um, I was actually on the other side opposite to where I, uh, I eventually would run into Eric. So one uh, one playoff game, I sat over by Eric. I thought it was a good perspective, even though it was on the sideline, kind of corner of the end zone. Our perspective is kind of like it's kind of diagonal a little bit, so you actually get a really good feel for uh, how the uh, you know yeah, you how, how the field is configured. And yeah. like in the NFL game, if you're in one of the end zones, you can't really tell the perspective of the running backs or first downs because it's the, the plays are going away from you. And you can't really get that perspective, but uh, with us, um, where we are, we have the really good uh, perspective. And of course, we're like basically in the on the field. Yeah. So being kind of on the field, another advantage of the arena football is you you know it's just a different perspective. You feel closer to the game, like you're literally almost on the field. And there's not a bad uh, bad seat in the house. Yeah. So yeah, just a little briefing also for this. We're also broadcasting live right now on, on our Meerkat user handle on Meerkat at Ninth Man, Ninth Man Nation, and we got a couple of people on there. This is uh, from Pink Nana. Uh, where are you? We're actually at a, we're actually recording this at a, a restaurant that was um, the former sponsor of the San Jose Sabercats called Blue Water Seafood and Crab in um, the Willow Glen district of San Jose. So that's where we're at. We're at San Jose. That's and. Um, 
just to let you know a little bit more about myself, when I got involved in the Sabercats, um, it took me going for about five years to uh, to get really, really deep involved to where I started um, making, building a, a rapport, a relationship with not just only the players, but also some of the, the office uh, per, um, staffing and management, and then also definitely the coach, like Darren Arbett, and, and all his assistant coaches, Terry Malley and everybody, and some of the, some of the ra- radio people that we had, um, Keena Turner of the 49ers. We also had, um, uh, what's his name from the Raiders? Uh, a- a- Atkinson? George Atkinson, yeah. George so, Atkinson. so we built rapport, and, and also um, the Bob Fitzgerald, who does the, the, the Golden State Warriors TV broadcast. So they were doing stuff for the for the Sabercats, both on TV and radio. Um so basically, like when I got more involved, I I, I set up a sort of like a, a temporary you know fan website at sjsabercats.net, which was no longer in existence. But then I also met with another diehard cats fan. Um, he basically wanted to run a fan club. There was an old fan club that had existed, but wanted to reestablish. Saber Claws. Yeah, the Saber Claws wanted to reestablish a fan club because there was issues with um, the relationships on how the fans were running the previous one and got ahead of themselves with the other ones and then and the Sabercats sort of shut down that idea for a little bit yeah I was so, actually uh, I was actually part of the original uh, crew that started getting together yeah. uh, for the Saber Claws and I mean literally we we uh, met at a pizza place and we were trying to get it all set up but I wasn't able to uh, devote the time and effort initially so I kind of stepped away from it um, and then, of course, eventually, uh, you know, Eric started uh, heading up the new uh, fan club. And well, I basically it kind of made any sense. I basically was helping out another guy. I ran into Ty Whitman. Ty Whitman oh, okay. um, started the San Jose's Ninth Man Fan Club, mm-hmm. and the reasoning for calling it San Jose's Ninth Man is because Ninth Man is a universal term in arena football for the home team crowd. And, and then this ninth man belongs to San Jose, so therefore San Jose's ninth man is what we call the fan club. He started out with it, and he took it over, but then scheduling conflicts with his work, his family, and also he had suffered an injury caused him not to really to to make much time and focus into the, the fan club as he wanted to make it grow. So And I had helped him out on some small things, and, uh, and he saw what I was capable of doing as far as for interacting and get it to, to be marketable, that he basically at the end of the season allowed me to take it over for, for, for the rest of time. So this was in 2005. I took it over in 2005 and had been running it ever since. So it's been 10 years since I've been running the fan club. I pretty much think it was the best fan club in all the arena football play as far as for Absolutely. The, the presence of it on, on social media, on uh, getting interactive with the fans, and also the website design. Because I don't see, I've searched other fan club sites, and I haven't really seen it except for the Arena Rush people, you know, Chicago Rush, Ninth Man. And they did something, but they weren't really committed on to timely news and all that stuff, and as I am. So that's basically where I came from, and I run the fan club. And I've grown to the fact where I know from a, just a general standpoint, that the league needs to be successful in order to have the individual teams that are its members. So therefore, that's why I went and did this now. What we're doing now is I created Ninth Man Nation, and basically it's where I want to have all the AFL fans come together as one. We have our you know little you know gripes and all that stuff when we're we're facing each other, but most importantly, it's, uh, it takes the fans to make the league successful. Because if you go back to business one on one in school. Your customer makes your business successful. If you don't have a customer, you have nothing to sell, nobody to sell to. So the fans are the customers. So you'll have no tickets there. Uh, you have no sponsorships because the sponsorships won't see anybody seats in the arena. They won't see their their brand or their logos being visible to the public eye if there's nobody there to watch it. So basically, that's why I'm launching Ninth Man Nation. Do you want me to hang on to that? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we- <clears throat> this is kind of a, a work in progress, by the way. We're kind of just doing this for the first time, so we'll kind of get it all situated, just so you know. Yeah, and, and again, once again, we are on Meerkat at Ninth Man Nation for our live stream, actually, as we're recording this right now. Um, of course, this is, uh, that's when you can catch us live. We probably will be doing every single podcast recording live. Uh, this just is the spirit of the moment I brought my phone up and started recording it. 
So, and we already have a couple of followers on there. We got, what, around 11 people watching on the top left there? Yep. And we already got one person. Shout out. So, basically, the purpose now that we have a little background on us, on the host, and we have our multiple experiences, and we've gone and networked out with um, other teams, like, for example, the L.A. Kiss, who play in um, the Honda Center in Anaheim. Uh, we've known their fan ambassador of L.A.'s Ninth Man, um, uh, Brian Fox. He's, he's a true, a truly a great guy. We've become really good friends. Uh, we hang out. We chit-chat about the league and all that stuff. And, um, he, was, and he was even uh, back from when L.A. had the Avengers. Yes. He was a uh, part of that, uh, the whole fan yeah, he helped out, experience. and He helped out with Casey yeah. Wasserman and all that yeah. stuff. And then when the KISS were announced... The kids basically had nowhere, you know, to practice, nowhere to house players, so they they turned to Brian, and of course, you know, the kids were not going to play in the same building as the the vendors, the Staples Center. They moved to a Honda Center for obvious reasons, for availability and also for the cost of rent, um, which is understandable for a startup team, expansion team. Um, so, and they turned to Brian because you know, of his experience with the Avengers and, and and how deep he was involved with Casey Wasserman's owning of the Avengers. So, unfortunately, you know, Brian's not from the Anaheim area, so his guess was as good as he could. So, he helped out the best he could, and he got the team, you know, uh, some kind of a footprint. Now, and, you know, that's that's a beautiful arena, by the way. Yeah, Honda Center is really nice. Yeah, we, we, we were able to uh, go to the game, I think, as you mentioned. Uh, we went to a road game, which we're trying to do more and more. Uh, it's, I mean, it's a great experience, but it's kind of nice to go on road games because not only do you get to see your team and support them on the road, but at the same time, you get to kind of experience the local uh, area and see, you know, you get a bit different perspective than if you're just watching on TV. Yeah, and plus you get to meet other fans and interact, and that's what the whole thing is about. Yes. It's just to be interactive and socialized, you know. You can have your conversations, you know, with other people, and, you know, you can do your friendly, you know, smart tag, oh, my team's better than your team, your team's better than mine, whatever, and we're going to win, whoever. But all in all, when the when the clock uh, strikes zero and we have a final score or whoever it comes out ahead, you know, with the victory, it's all said and done. It's done and over with, and we go and party um, after the game. The LA Kiss have a sponsor co- um, called Tilt to Kill. It's in orange. Um, it's on the stadium promenade. It's like around five minutes away from the Honda Center. And we went there, and they go there after every single home game where the fans are able to come meet and, and casually sit down and meet with the players, coaching staff, and some of the LA Kiss girls, which is the dance team members. So we met all of them, and we great. We would hang out with their head coach, and uh, Bob McMillan, who's now no longer with the team. But he's a great guy, former Sabre Cat, and we, we've known him for years. And we also wish him well for his future endeavors in the AFL. Yes. So, but... It's interaction like that, and another, and then the Honda Center is a great facility, a place to host the arena football. It has done it so before, back in the '90s when it hosted the Anaheim Piranhas. So, and it, and it's a great place. Um, Ellie Kiss to have a, a deserving and great product, and, and they're making their change. Um, Gene Simmons, Paul Stanley, and the manager Doc McGee are getting more into the arena football and they're getting to know the business behind it. I know the first year they were on like the fourth and loud um, uh, program. Series program. That was, that, was that on TNT? I think it was on A&E. A&E? Or, A&E, A&E or TNT? No, it was A&E or AMC. I think oh, it was maybe A&E. it was AMC. AMC, yeah. yeah. Uh, but anyways. That was, that was uh, very interesting. I mean, it, it's because the Arena Football League does not have the commercialization and the sponsorships and all that of the NFL, it was kind of nice to kind of see mainstream. And I, I know uh, probably the uh, KISS organization had a big part in it because of you know the fact that they're totally all into media and entertainment and everything. So it was a good opportunity for fans who knew nothing about the Arena Football League to kind of have that exposure. And fans who are current uh, you know, current fans, the ability to kind of get that inside look that you didn't get uh, before. Yeah. So, so it, it was a great thing. Um, the only issue, um, I, not knowing Tom, okay, the Kiss are entering into their third year of existence. I went down there two years. So the this last year that the season that just concluded, we went down there, and uh, that was, was Tom's first year going to the Kiss game down there in Anaheim. And we met great people there. Uh, a matter of fact, the people that sat right next to us 
were first time arena football attendees, period, no matter what situation you, you were going to ask. And I think me and Tom uh, basically sold them into possibly buying, you know, season tickets for next year. Right. And that's the only issue that we really had with um, some of these newer teams is that the cost of their tickets are kind of high. And for the most part, um, arena football is um, an affordable product for fans. It's nothing like the um, NFL. You don't have to mortgage your house to go to it. But the KISS are working on that. Like I said, they were new. They went based off of what the, the market value had down there in, in Anaheim and off what the, um, the NHL counterparts, the, um, the Ducks, were, were selling their tickets off of, which NHL has been around for a while. The Ducks are a pretty well-known team and dominant team in the NHL. They've won their shares of championships and a lot. So they have a right to charge a little bit higher, and they have a, uh, a solid a fan base already, and they've, they've been established for a while. Kiss, just getting underway, need to probably be a little bit more generous about you know offering you know a better value for the. And this year, they launched a major campaign with season ticket holders, so they're they're working on it. They're working on it, and a lot of this has to do with um, the the fact that they hired away from Arizona, uh, Joe Windham, and Joe Windham. We, Tom and I met, or actually more I met, and Tom was off at Tilt to Kill. And before Tom and I went back to our hotel, I stopped off and, and introduced myself to, to Joe Wyndham. Great guy. I uh, basically shared some thoughts, uh, what I thought could be help help out, you know, with um, the kiss and all that stuff and my years in the Arena Football League. He was right on the same page, and he says a lot, a lot of work is going to be done, and we're going to change the way this model was done here in L.A., and he's doing it. By George, he's taking former Sabercat players and coaches with him. But hey, yeah, they're got... they're making a big. Uh, if, if you take a look at all the uh, transactions that they've made, they took a our one of our great quarterbacks that can pretty much start anywhere for any league. team in the league, yeah. and would normally be starting for uh, San Jose if they didn't get uh, if San Jose didn't get uh, you know Eric Meyer. Yeah, Eric Meyer. So uh, great guy, great te- you know great uh, player. Um, they've had a number of other transactions, so they've gotten a couple people from uh, Arizona. Yeah, like gotten, Marcus Pittman. Yeah, uh, a couple people just from around the league. Of course, they got uh, assistant coach Omar Smith is now their head coach. Yeah, so uh, there's some good stuff that's going to be happening in LA. Yeah, so, so, so we're actually going to uh, plan another trip to go down there. Uh, hopefully, we'll see the SaberCats there. Uh, it's kind of too early uh, to determine if they're actually going to be playing in 2016, but uh, one way or another. Um, I actually told uh, uh, Nate uh, Stanley that uh, we'll see him there. So we're yeah, gonna, so we're gonna what, go. whether the Sabercats are playing or not, Tom and I still have plans on you know supporting the sport itself. Not necessary our personal thoughts on how things are being handled right now, but we'll get to details on that right now. This episode of the Nation the podcast is basically just to introduce ourselves, give our backgrounds, some thoughts and, uh, and experiences that we've shared. Uh, some other great fans that we met are part of um, the Thunder Legion, which is um, Portland's Ninth Man. And we met some great people up there when we were up there for both uh, my first time ever in the state of Oregon, in Portland. And we made some great friends up there. Um, so, And we're hoping to go back to Portland, too. And we try to travel to there and see how things go. You know, everything's always, always um, you know, cost prohibitive because Tom and I both live in the San Jose metropolitan area. And, you know, the cost of living here and, and just overall li- um, doing business out here is kind of expensive. It's one of the most expensive places to live, and also it's now been considered the richest city in the country. Wow, so, yeah. That's right. And, you know, also just to kind of add to what you were saying, uh, Eric, um, I kind of also wanted to use the opportunity to go to uh, Portland. I know that they are known for their breweries. So we went to go see uh, Widmere Brothers. Uh, we took the brewery tour. Great uh you know, great area just to great people. Yeah, uh, that's a pro. You know, yeah. So you know, we went there, uh, hung out. We kind of stayed there uh, a day for the game, and then kind of a day before we had to go back yeah. for, for the weekend. And uh, you know, but even when we went to the stadium or the arena, uh, just from the moment we we entered the property, people were wanting to talk to us. Um, you know, a lot of the passionate players or uh, uh, fans there. They looked up to the Sabercats because of the fact that the Sabercats were kind of the premier organization that's been around for such a long time that's had, you know, several arena championships. So I kind of felt like almost like celebrity fans because of the fact that 
you know, like the fans kind of treated us like, you know what, this is the way we want to see our Portland team. We want to see them uh, with the success of the Sabercats. Uh, so, you know, they, they were very gracious. We were able to kind of sit in a couple uh, areas a little closer to the field where uh, we normally wouldn't have. But rather than having the opposing uh, team, you know, fans there, they were actually very uh, courteous. And they had us go down and, you know, interact and hang out, knowing that we're probably not going to be cheering for Portland. So, uh, you know, shout out to, uh, you know, the fans there. Great arena that you guys have there. Uh, you guys have only been here for, what, two years, second yeah, two season? Years, just like the LA Kiss. Uh, but, I mean, man, I could tell you that uh, there's going to be some good stuff happening in Portland good as well. Good stuff so. happening. Uh, the arena football has now has its uh, footprint base, you know, what Butera wants. The commissioner is Scott Butera, and he's done his first year. So it remains to be seen on how things are going, but that's for another episode to discuss about that. Um, and just from an overall sharing perspective, um, this podcast is not really going to be like a, a news-oriented podcast. Yeah, we'll share some tidbits on some new stuff, like expansion growth, but that's for it to get other fans involved, like when they um, have the expansion going to um, Washington, D.C., and, and they're going to be playing over there, and they think their owners is going to be the Wizards of the NBA. The Sacramento Kings are looking to own a team at their new Golden One Center that's being built right now in downtown Sacramento. And then um, also, who was the third one? Was it um, Washington, D.C., Sacramento? And then um, 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 I just posted it on Ninth Man Nation Facebook last night. Yeah. It's this stuff's all new. I mean, this is just happening there you go. as it goes. Let's see. We're checking our, our, our look here on the website on the expansion teams. Yeah, we'll have to. Yeah, we'll have to. We'll have to post it on the Facebook page. Um, but basically, we got it. We got like some sort of more fans on here. We thank for like this. Restream this. Cool. Does that mean somebody restreamed it? For yeah, us? they're restreaming it. Cool. We thank you. All right. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks, thanks for uh, taking a look over at our Meerkat account. So, um, basically, we're looking on some information, but, yeah, basically, they have a footprint, and um, to discuss this on our next episode, because we've already gone this into, like, 27 minutes now, it looks like, um, we, and that was actually a surprise that we went this long, but... Yeah, you know, you never know. You never know. Once we start talking arena football, it's like... We can never stop, because we, we love just, the sport yeah, yeah, so much. Just, we just keep going. So, um, and this is our first go at it, so we basically don't have a structure or a format to our... Um, the Nation podcast yet, but we're looking at it. Um, yeah, as you can tell, we're live on Meerkat as we're recording our first episode. Um, we also plan to possibly, you know, when we get better uh, situated as far as for how we're recording, we may be doing live streams on, on Ninth Man Nation TV, the Nation TV, which is over on YouTube. So to prevent, if you want to get news updates for that, you can subscribe to our channel at NinthManNation.tv, and that will take you right to our YouTube channel, and you can subscribe. Our website is ninthmannation.net, so that's the number nine, t h m a n nation.net, and you can see all our our social media handles on the side there, and some. So, like I said, our initial thing is not to be a news gallery, a news um, outlet. We want to be more of a situation for fans to report and let them share their experiences. And we're doing this podcast. We will have, you know, officials, you know, from the league. We're working on that. Um, and getting everything straightened out with the league, uh, like any media credentials through individual teams and through the league office already. I've already uh, been speaking this uh, on the lighter weight with um, um, Anthony Heron, who is uh, the executive vice president of communications for the Arena Football League. I also let um, Steve Watson know about this. He's the executive vice president for the AFL Players Union. So we're basically working in. We're doing our best to keep on good terms with them and, and to help the league promote itself and to grow. And hopefully for us here in San Jose, as we're sitting here at our one of my friend's restaurants, that we get our, our Sabercats back here at San Jose and at the SAP Center. Do we need, should we, should we say where we are? We're Blue Water. Blue Water. Yeah, Blue Water. Seafood Crab. Blue Water Seafood Crab, which was actually Great in the place. 2014 season, uh, the official postgame spot for yeah. the Sabercats. So we're here as we're, as Tom is taking my phone and showing the background to it to the live stream so that's basically all we have here so now to sum things up we introduced ourselves you know my name is Eric Thoreau co-host here is Tom Jones and we're going to be basically 
doing experiences and having other fans on. We will be having a Sabercat fan on beside us ourselves, a couple of them since, we, of course, we're here in San Jose, to share their experiences of the Sabercats, how they got involved, and um, and their thoughts, actually, of what just transpired a few weeks ago about the, uh, the Fry's ownership leaving the AFL altogether, which, like we said, we're not new, so we'll, that'll be a whole different experience. Uh, and then we also uh, will get involved with um, having um, other fans from other teams get involved and start forming the Ninth Man Nation and having other members of the Ninth Man get involved. So, so this is the beginning of something good. Yep. And uh, you know, any suggestions you guys have along the way, feel free to uh, let us know. Anything that you might uh, find that might uh, make it that much more exciting. It's kind of trial and error as we go along, just like anything else. But uh, you know, we just want to we want to have the setting to where we're just sitting around with a bunch of arena uh, fans, friends. And just kind of just talking, talking the talk, and just really, just you know, yeah, act, it, act like we would normally just be talking the talk like we yeah, normally do. Eventually, so. we want to make this so where arena football is such a it's such a, a conversational um, subject year round that it doesn't like you know have an open and closing date, you know, and then nobody talks about it during after the arena ball day one after the arena ball. Like arena football doesn't exist anymore, and everybody's getting into the NFL. So we want arena football to be on people's minds as commonly and as naturally as the NFL has been. But, of course, the NFL has been around a lot longer than the Arena Football League. So it took the NFL, you know, just as much. But they had to go through their errors and all that stuff. And they also had to go through um, the lack of social media. So with the, the all the social media that we have, like this is a podcast that's going to be on our SoundCloud. We are live streaming on Meerkat. Uh, of course, we have a YouTube channel. We, uh, we also have a Facebook page, a Google Plus page. You know, we have an Instagram. We have a Twitter account. So we have all that. We have a website. So, so no more than any opportunity to have a, just a couple of schmoes like this sit around and talk and, you know, have people view and have people interact and have people talk to us and, you know, just kind of be a part of it. Uh, it kind of inspires us to just get all the latest and greatest information that's coming out. And I tell you, this uh, off season. Uh, it's, it's it's pretty pretty damn busy. Yeah, um, it's pretty busy on a daily basis. There's transactions going on, you know, new players moving around within the league. You have just all of this news about expansion, unfortunate news, of course, about the SaberCats and you know the whole limbo about that and where where we're going to be. But I think uh, Eric and I are big enough fans to where if the SaberCats aren't around this year, there's going to be just so much more news and opportunity and ways for us to kind of get involved by going to games and, uh, you know, really just kind of picking up where we leave off every year. Uh, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I know you're looking I'm forward looking to forward it. I'm looking forward to it. And like we said, we don't know what's going to be up the air for the Sabercats brand, whether it's going to be here in San Jose, uh, whether they're doing the Stockton or they're going to Sacramento. Um, so even if the Sabercats cease to exist for one year, two years, or a numerous amount of years or never come back, which I don't think will happen because uh, San Jose is just too good of a market not to have an AFL team, especially as as uh, storied as the San Jose Sabercats in the past. But um, we are AFL fans, and we don't care about the other leagues and and other st- uh, leagues that tried to start up after, you know, trying to want to bring a team into the AFL, which is another issue that's also more news and media related. So. Um, Basically, we're here just for the fans, and we want to see this league grow. We want to see it be in every major market out there, and we want the fans to really appreciate it. We want to see people wearing – you go to the grocery store, and it can be like game day, your team's playing, and we want you to see you wearing your jersey like right now. I'm wearing a shirt I created called Ninth Man Loud, Ninth Man Proud, as I'm showing this, um, the Meerkat stream channel. And it uh, has the Sabercat logo on the bottom. Sorry, I didn't bring my jersey. Yeah, so Can't think about it. Basically, that's how we want. We want it to where you can see the jerseys out there and people recognizing the brands of the AFL logos and the shield. So that's basically where we're at. So uh, at this point, I guess we'll go ahead and end it up because we're referring to like 35 minutes now. Yeah, so what we'll do is, uh, you know, the next episode, um, we'll start talking about. The information, like I said, the information is coming in so fast, and there's a lot of rumor, and, you know, some rumor starts to turn to the fact, so we have to really just digest all of this information because we're, like, all over the place because of the fact that the league is all over the place and just what's going to happen, And but we know that all this stuff has to be 
resolved within the next couple of weeks because we're getting to the holidays, we're getting to the end of the year. And also they plans have to, have to be already be made. Yeah, Schedules have to be made for arenas. Yeah, travel plans and all that and everything. So I think uh, within the next couple of weeks, everything will be resolved to the fact that you know who's going to be in the league, this up, how many teams, what cities are going to be involved, and all that. All that's going to uh, come to uh, come to pass within the next couple of weeks. Yeah. So next episode will be a little more organized. We'll have maybe some concrete information. Maybe we'll throw in a couple of rumors. Maybe we'll throw well, we'll throw in a lot of facts that yeah, we have. We'll try to stay away from, from the rumor mill. We will say that there's certain rumors out there, but we'll we'll try it and we'll work our best to um, you know get those rumors confirmed or not confirmed either way. Like say Team X is going to join the league or Team X is not going to join the league. So and we'll try to work some of the contacts that I've established and I'm trying to build with not only just the league office but also with. Um, you know the individual teams out there, so that's that's basically what we're gonna do. So we're gonna end it on that note. Uh, we hope you, uh, if you're listening to us on SoundCloud, which is what we'll, we'll be doing, um, I hope you can reshare because we will share this on Facebook and Google Plus pages. Plus, it's also embedded on our um, podcast page on NinthManNation.net and also on the widget right on the side page there for you to listen. Subscribe to us on Ninthman Nation at SoundCloud. And that's it. So my name is Eric Thoreau. Tom Jones. And this has been the first broadcast of the, the Nation podcast. And we hope to see you or hear from you guys again. Take it easy. Thanks.